Joining us now is our next guest, Superintendent of Avondale School District. It is Dr. James Schwarz with us on the Oakland County Megacast. Dr. Schwarz, thank you for being with us again. Great, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's been a little while since we've last spoken. How's the school district been adjusting to everything, to all these new factors coming into play in the last several weeks? Yeah, it certainly is a fluid situation. Uh, and certainly we're planning on, you know, three different plans, uh, which the governor has re required of all school districts. Uh, so coming up with a remote plan that would satisfy if the state were in phases one through three of her state reopening plan, uh, phase four, uh, which we're currently in now uh, of her plan and then stage five. So we are currently in the mode of planning for all of those phases in the event that we have to toggle between uh, those phases as the governor decides uh, what phase for us to be in. So right now we're in phase four. Uh, we're planning forward to be opening school as if we were in phase four. Uh, and so that has been the premise of our work most recently. And what does that look like for students and families in Avondale schools going back to school in phase four? Will it be partially virtual and partially in person? Will there be certain grades or certain uh, or certain schools that will be entirely in person? How is that going to work for these families? Sure. For us, our conversations uh, have been uh, in planning students coming back to school uh, five days a week. Uh, certainly our survey results from our community indicate uh, a vast majority of parents want their students back in school because they need to get back to the workplace uh, we need schools to get, you know, to get back in session so the economy can get back on track. And, uh, and we are working to that end. Uh, so for us, uh, for Avondale, you know, we are looking at a, uh, right now, at, at a five day a week uh, uh, protocol. Uh, it will look a little different. Uh, it will be a majority with, uh, you know, social distancing protocols in place. Uh, a lot of cohorting uh, where we're keeping groups of students together uh, and reducing the amount of transitions uh, with students uh, in hallways, um, you know, to and from places in the school. Uh, so with cohort models, it will involve at the secondary level, looking at some block type scheduling where students will be in a location longer in the day than they previously had been. Uh, again, trying to reduce those transitions, keeping students together in cohorts, uh, and again, abiding by social distancing guidelines. Uh, that will also affect lunch schedules uh, and, and those types of things throughout the day. So we are working through that level of granularity right now, uh, but um, you know, our, our plan is certainly to accommodate families in having school as normal as possible on a five-day week schedule. Uh, we'll also be offering parents you know, the option uh, for those that are not comfortable in having their students in school, uh, the option to uh, continue with a remote format. It will be a revised format of, of what we had done in the spring uh, as far as remote learning goes. Uh, certainly through that exercise, we've uh, learned some things in terms of what to improve upon and, and we're making those improvements. So that, that will be an option for families uh, as well. So, uh, you know, so we're working on, on that, uh, those two end con continuums at the moment. Well, Dr. Schwartz, we're returning kids to the schools in the fall five days a week. It presents some potential issues uh, because you can encourage students to maintain social distance and put measures in place to do so. Mm -hmm. But as much order as you can provide to kids, in, in many cases, they're going to do their own thing, especially uh, as you're going into the later years where they're making more independent decisions. And with thousands of kids potentially in the high school situation, how do you work to maintain that they keep the social distance and they are keeping safe distance from one another and that crowding isn't an issue while having kids entirely in school five days a week? Sure. So with that becomes hallway protocols, you know, looking at one way directionality in, in, in hallways, similar to what supermarkets are doing, uh, where there's a single line of travel uh, within a particular hallway. Uh, again, reducing the amount of time they're out of a classroom, so reducing transitions. So they're only transitioning a couple times a day versus, you know, every hour, uh, and and also changing the lunch protocols, you know, as well. Uh, so, you know, are we going to eliminate uh, students being together? No, and nowhere is that the case. Uh, but we are taking, you know, measures to certainly reduce. Uh, 
the uh, the ability for them to social distance uh, or the ability for them to not to social distance. So, you know, is it going to be foolproof? Nope. No plan is going to be anywhere. Uh, but we, we, you have to take, you know, measures to uh, reduce that. And of course, with mask wearing and things like that, we'll have policies and protocols that will be in place uh, that will be uh, enforcing, um, you know, those uh, types of, of protections as well. Dr. James Schwartz with us on the Oakland County Megacast. He is the superintendent of, Aven of the Avondale School District. So as the Avondale school students do return to school and things happen, people get sick during the course of the school year and maybe they have to take days off or they have to be out of school for certain periods of time. Is there flexibility in this plan for a student that is in school five days a week but is feeling under the weather and in, in an abundance of caution is staying home that they're still able to learn potentially virtually so that they aren't getting behind on the days that they're not in the classroom? Absolutely. Yeah. And we would treat those on a case by case basis. So, uh, you know, if the student is in school and then for whatever circumstances may uh, require them to go remote, we would make those accommodations uh, accordingly. And for those that, that remain entirely virtual in their learning uh, this coming year, how, how is that going to mirror what's being seen in the classrooms physically at these schools throughout the district? Are they going to be on the same track? Are there going to be dedicated teachers for virtual, are they going to be able to get the same or maybe more attention potentially than those in the classroom uh, as they're working through their work? So the the remote learning will be, uh, as I mentioned earlier, a little different from the spring in that it will contain uh, asynchronous as well as synchronous learning. Uh, so there would be opportunities for you know direct instruction happening in real time uh, on on that uh, platform. Uh, so keeping up in pace uh, to the class, in seated class as much as possible. Uh, certainly that is the goal and that is the plan. So, um, you know, again, it would be an enhanced type of a situation from what we were in last spring. Uh, again, with remote learning, um, there will be accountability uh, on, on the students. So it won't be just a pass fail. It won't be just a credit, no credit. Uh, scenario uh, similar to what was in the spring. If folks are choosing to be remote, attendance will be taken, grades will be given, it will be a class, uh, and then accountability will be there. So that also is, is different from where we were in the spring. So, uh, but as far as, as keeping in sync with what uh, concepts uh, and what instruction is happening in seat versus out of seat, uh, it will be, uh, efforts will be that it will be very similar. So, Dr. Schwartz, in March when we went into this pandemic, there was such a sudden change from in-person learning to virtual learning with all these plans in place. Should we see a, situa a, a situation, a worst case scenario in the fall where there is a second wave and a sudden transition has to be made once again, how better prepared now is Avondale schools, its students and its families to adjust to that swift transition an abrupt transition than they were in March. I think we're much better prepared. As I said, you know, we we certainly learned uh, from the situation we were in in the spring that we were thrust in, you know, and we were frankly in emergency mode at that point, you know, uh, and we were learning as we went. Uh, that was totally uncharted territory. No one's ever been there, you know. Having been through that experience and getting the feedback from our staff, getting feedback from students and families. You know, we've learned uh, what to do and what not to do uh, or what to enhance uh, and how to improve that situation. And so, uh, you know, we, we've done that. Uh, and if we need to toggle back to a phase three where everyone is remote and no one is in seat, uh, we are much uh, better able to adjust into that framework um, with, uh, I'll say, uh, more seamless um, and uh, you know, with more, um, I'll say, quality than we had in, in, the, uh, in the spring. Uh, you know, we, we're still building up uh, devices uh, to furnish more uh, technology to families in the event that, that we have to rapidly move back to a remote situation. Uh, we're not quite to a one-to-one -one yet, but we're moving in that direction. Uh, once we get to that point, obviously, we would be able to pivot even faster uh, if we were able to provide every student with their own device. 
um, we're getting there, but of course that's, you know, financially related. And so uh, it's, it's going to take some time for us to get to that point, but we're certainly moving in that direction. How much is the uncertainty with the budget dollars that are coming in a factor in making that adjustment? Oh, it's a big factor. You know, uh, you know, we're looking at, you know, a $700 per student cut that, that, you know, uh, ultimately, you know, that, that, that is going to impact how fast we get to a one to one in technology. So, um, you know, the, the, the ramifications of the economy uh, is certainly uh, impacting schools very negatively as we open the fall. Dr. Schwartz, where can people, where can families in Avondale schools find more information on the plans for upcoming fall? Well, we will be, uh, there'll be, uh, well, there's surveys that are going out currently uh, that are to all of our families that will be highlighting uh, some basic information about where we're at in our planning. Uh, and then that in information and feedback that we get from families is going to be compiled and placed on our website. And we're also going to be uh, hosting some town hall meetings uh, that will be coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks that will highlight questions from parents uh, that from elementary parents and likewise we'll have town halls with secondary parents uh, that will answer questions from that end of things. So uh, there will be a series of, uh, of informational sessions coming out as we uh, granulize our, the details of our plan. Dr. Schwartz, anything else you'd like to touch on today before we let you go? No, I just appreciate you uh, getting on. And of course, you know, there are a number of um, uh, details, obviously, as, as one can imagine. Uh, and of course, with all of those details come a variety of opinions and uh, from various places. Uh, and we're doing our best to incorporate as much feedback as we can uh, in informing our plans. Uh, and a number of things are non-negotiable. You know, folks think that, well, you know, the school district has ultimate authority to create whatever it wants. Well, it, it does not. Uh, we are under uh, requirements that come from the state, that come from the governor, and we also have protocols and requirements that are coming from the Oakland County Health Department. So, uh, so we have a lot of opinions on masks and temperature taking and all of those things. And frankly, a lot of that decision making is out of the school district's hands. That is in the hands of, of health department and government and governor and, and those types of things. So, uh, you know, while, you know, uh, and those are things that we have to abide by and that become non-negotiables. So, um, you know, there, there are folks that think, well, the school district can do what it wants and mandate what it wants. You know, it, it, it can't in, in many cases. So, uh, and, the, and again, those things will be spelled out as we give information and have town halls and things like that. Well, Dr. Schwartz, we, thank, we appreciate having you on with us today. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you so much.